Welcome everyone. My name is Adrian Molina. I'm the co-founder of the Warrior Flow School. And today I'm here with my dear friend and yoga teacher, Lizzie McDonald. And we're going to be McDonald's, right? I pronounced correctly. Yeah. yeah. And today we're going to be exploring and hopefully encouraging those of you who are, uh, who use uh, forum crutches to practice yoga. How are you doing, Lizzie? I am doing pretty well. Nervous. Uh, I, what was well, the last welcome time? I... To my, welcome to my yoga studio, aka my living room. There you go. <laughs> well, welcome. I already explained it, <laughs> tell you before going live that my my computer is on a iron table. I'm on a rocking chair, so all my technology is on point today. Um so you and I spoke a few days ago. When, when was that? Less than a week ago. Yes, less than a week ago. Yeah, and so we went very deep into our stories, into the personal personal stories. Both of us, we have so many uh, things in common. And it might be helpful to drop, um, when we release this video, to drop that conversation link in there. Or when we share this with people who might be watching this at a later time. But today, I think I, I just I'm just here to hold a space for you to teach us uh, from your experience uh, the uniqueness of who you are and the wonderful thing that you have done with the practice to adapt the practice to your needs. And I think that is so. Uh, I don't want to say groundbreaking, but so courageous in a way. So I pass it on to you and we'll take it from there. Um, it's interesting because uh, so I practiced yoga with my forearm crutches and I started playing around with it during when we were all shut in during the, the COVID, you know, the height of the COVID pandemic. And I started messing around with my forearm crutches and postures. Um, and shapes. And I realized that it was interesting. I didn't see anyone doing it online. And then when I met my yoga therapist in early 2021, she's like, I, and I didn't bring, I wasn't, I was like, oh, I can use a chair or the wall to spread balance. She's like, no, use your, use your forearm crutches, use them in everyday life. Why wouldn't you use them in your yoga practice and it just like click like oh this is normal this is normal they're an extension of my body and that's kind of what she said they're an extent they're like an extension of your limbs 100 so, yeah uh, and those are wise words from that therapist but i also know that you have very frustrating experiences in yoga studios can you tell us that a little bit about that um, yeah, so while I had for a brief time until we went into lockdown, I had an amazing eye anger yoga teacher. There was only four of us. It was very supportive. It was wonderful. But then when COVID shutdown happened, that sort of ended. And then after um, that, I decided I would try to go to some like group classes just offered in the community. I felt strong enough and, um, you know, I don't want to talk about all the negativity, but the one, the one that always stands out in my mind that people are kind of shocked from is, you know, I showed up at the class with my forearm crutches. I told the uh, teacher that I'd be practicing and I might drop one and it was like, no problem. So I did, I did the practice, did it well, dropped a crutch. And in a lot of yoga classes, it's like si pure silence. And at the end of the class, the yoga teacher asked uh, if I wouldn't, told me that I could come back to the yoga class when I could practice yoga appropriately. And that was tough. And then, you know, I had a couple other experiences with group yoga classes that I was like, I'm not, this isn't my, I'm not into the group. And it's become a very private personal practice, but I do miss having a yoga community. Um, but you know, it's been a personal private practice and in a lot of ways I get to practice how I want to and what works best for me. And I almost want to say that when you tell that story, what I hear is the same silence that you probably heard when you dropped the 
the crutch in that class is so uh it's, it's so upsetting but i want to focus not necessarily on the positive but i want i, I want to ask you a question mm -hmm. you you definitely know because you and i spoke about trauma and how we held everything in the body you know how you felt at that moment but now yeah. you're a, now you're a yoga teacher not only that you're a trauma informed yoga teacher has your perception of those teachers have changed in any way or the feelings that you have from those experiences have shifted in any way yeah so in that moment i felt really shamed i felt i felt really angry at my body for not being able to be normal but um these days I feel like, wow, like I can use this for education. I feel more empowered. Um, I know that there is a, there are communities of yoga teachers interested in accessibility and adaptive. And so I guess the perspective has just shifted because I feel like now I can use it as a platform for education. Like, and, and I also are. have some compassion because they don't, like, I hope that they've learned more. But I also know, like, we don't know what we don't know. Now, while those were really insensitive things, an insensitive thing to say, yes, but perhaps that teacher has gotten more education or has thought about it. So I guess I have some compassion knowing that, you know, we don't know what we don't know. And so I, I want to imagine that we have uh, a lot of people will be watching this video who might be wheelchair users, forearm crutches users. Uh, someone who has disabilities of any kind whether visible or invisible where do we draw the line and i cannot i i don't consider myself someone with disability uh, some people might say that chronic pain might be disability i don't consider myself with disability but this is not to say that i'm better or worse but my question to you is to what extent someone who goes through that situation has the right responsibility intent to i don't know complain educate advocate what is the right thing to do so say if um I were to go into a class like and it was a at least they look like an able-bodied instructor like what what should they do is that what you're asking my question is now that you became a yoga teacher that is trauma informed and you know the importance of accessibility and being adaptive and being kind and being compassionate what will happen now if you were in the same class would you approach to the teacher and at the end of the class or to the front desk or oh you know i i might give them some resources now i might say hey there's some there's some like warrior flow training if you want there's standalone trainings like rodrigo's training uh if you want further you know if you want to add another 200 hour or 300 hour warrior flow has great um you know accessibility education uh, you know, there's other yoga resources, other teachers out there more publicly on Instagram talking about accessibility and adaptive. I might also say, hey, that that's a hurtful, that feels that feels hurtful to me. Now we're talking, and, that was me. I'll be cursing. Yeah. Uh, well, I guess. I'll be slamming probably. my hand so on it, the front desk <laughs> and put inside, a, a yeah. formal complaint. Um. So that might happen too, now that you mention it. But I also feel like it's like, wow, here's all these resources. And I will say that in my more recent days, I actually kind of have slammed my hand on the desk and I'm like, I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this if it's not gonna be accessible. I'm not doing it, I'm not doing it. But because of lack of willingness to understand, and it's okay if you don't wanna teach an accessible class, just don't advertise as such. I guess yeah. that's kind of where my anger comes from. Correct. But yes, I, I would probably tell that teacher that really hurts and that's inappropriate. And here's some resources. Like from my able body vision or view and for my yoga teacher perspective, I will, the natural thing for me is to advocate uh, or complain of both at the same time. 
because ultimately if you're taking the class and and you're not being welcomed or you don't feel welcome and you have to do another class the sense of community that you're longing for it gets disrupted by the same person who should be creating the safe space it's kind of a very uh very confusing place to be i can imagine i will say at the time i actually did send some um very assertive emails angry assertive emails and i got pushback that um you know they know what accessibility is and when i realized that it was just going to be this angry exchange i just left it it was yeah. it didn't feel worthy of my time at that point yeah well, because there's two things. First of all, you need to take care of yourself. And the fact that you are somewhere that someone that practices yoga in a different way doesn't mean that you have to be the ambassador and the advocate for everyone. Sometimes it might feel like you might feel like doing it, but it's not your responsibility. It's a responsibility for the yoga teacher. It's a responsibility for the studio owner to have that awareness of the importance to be a welcoming and accessible uh, yoga studio. Uh, hopefully those things are changing. And I also sincerely hope that you, you, you have found a little bit of virtual community between uh, the Warrior Flow School. Because I know the feeling I'm not of experiencing our practice as a not lonely, but alone. Mm -hmm. It is, and um, because I I don't see at least publicly, visibly, anyone practicing with forearm crutches or even walkers or you know things people use as adaptive equipment. You know, I do see wheelchair users. I know that's not huge either. Like there's not a huge presence, but it feel, it does feel uh lonely and isolating because i know that teachers have offered for me to use use the back of the chair for balance use the wall for balance it's hard to explain that for someone who doesn't live in the my body and use um, adaptive equipment when i practice yoga with my forearm crutches then when i go out into the world it translates so when i'm out in the world and say like my sciatica starts to bother me, I can use my forearm crutches and kind of gently do some stretching, you know, subtly that no one knows. Whereas if I didn't have a, I don't have a wall or a chair always available, whereas my crutches are always with me. You know what I'm thinking? It, it, perception is everything because let's say uh, our faculty member, Sam Schaefer, who has a, uh, uh, an amputation below the knee and he uses, uh, the 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 prosthetic how do you say prosthetic the prosthetic yeah. all the time i'm sure if he shows up to take a yoga class nobody's going to tell him remove the prosthetic to take my class so why would would you have to remove your crutches it's, it's people are funny I people I, I think it's just lack of education i know yeah. um one of the things my yoga t my yoga therapist has talked about is how when she had a foot injury, she showed up and she taught her yoga classes with her big old boot on because she wanted people to see that you can still practice and teach when you don't visibly look able-bodied. And I think that's just really important to show that representation, even yeah. if you don't, I don't always want to be the ambassador. And it's why I don't go to group classes because I just sometimes I just want to go take a class and leave. Now, remind me if my memory is right, but when you took our 200 hour yoga teacher training and you were submitting the assignments, I have the feeling that you asked me once if it was okay to submit your assignment with the forearm crutches on. Yes, so uh -huh. I was, I submitted the first couple of assignments and I did some of the practice. So I can do the, I can do the practices. I'm also going to hurt horribly for days, if not weeks. Um, and I was submitting the assignments and I was doing like during the lives, I would do things, you know, without using my crutches and I'm hurting 
and it was during a live and I think I got I started to cry and I was like can I please just use my forearm crutches and I believe you said, like, it got, it got very still. And I can't remember exactly what you said, but I know I felt so supported. I you think said it was, something to me. Go ahead. Yeah. I think it was through messages. You, uh, you asked no, me to be during, okay. No, it was during a live. It was, oh, was it a live? live. Okay. It was during a live because yeah. I just, we were about to do this practice. And I just said, can I please just use my forearm crutches? Because I remember you said to me, and we ended up having a conversation about disability yeah. during that live but you end up saying something to me along the lines of like Lizzie do not ever ask the question again you know something about how you know if you can practice how it feels good for your body yeah. I can't remember the exact words but I just remember I felt so yeah. supported and and then this conversation on disability actually ended up happening spontaneously during that live yeah it was it was it gave it, it empowered me it empowered me because I, I don't I didn't want I don't want to necessarily do all my yoga from a chair because sitting in a chair is painful because I know I had fallen the night before our first live I had a really terrible slip and fall and I didn't realize how bad the fall was it hit me the adrenaline wore off right during that live and I'm suddenly really angry because I'm like I mean I didn't under get it but I remember just I'm like, I don't want to sit in a chair. I remember reaching out and saying, you know, hey, I had this fall and I've got pretty extensive injuries. And and I know at first I was like, well, just practice from the chair. And I was like, okay, but the chair yeah. hurt. And so finally I was like, I can't yeah. do this. <laughs> Please let me practice with my crutches. And you know, yoga is, is an ev like everything. It's an evolution. We know that not everyone can stand up on a mat. And then mm -hmm. our assumption is okay let's give them a chair but not mm -hmm. everyone can be comfortable on the chair and some mm -hmm. people might need to stand up come down stand up lay down lay on their backs and so i think we're moving in the right direction looking at the world of yoga at large we understand that we cannot expect that because what we see on tv and instagram is wonderful people moving and creating all these amazing shapes we we cannot expect to recreate those experiences in the yoga class. And I do remember that conversation. And another thing that you remember that I remember, I think, is you asked me if you could submit one assignment with one of your friends as a student who was also using forum crutches. Do you remember that? Yes. And that was a wonderful I, video. I think I actually submitted it and decided I was just gonna go for it. And afterwards I'm like, I hope that was okay. Yeah, yeah, and 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 I think when I this is I'm gonna tell you a little bit, something that you don't know, and this okay. is gonna help for everyone watching now live or watching on replay. I have no experience with forum crutches because Lisi is my first friend and student and colleague now with forum crutches. So. You know, of course, I understand that you're not going, you never have to impose yourself in a, in a yoga class to anyone. And if they use any device, they have to use that because that's part of them. Like Lisa mentioned, they, they're an extension uh, of, of their body. And so I remember watching one of the assignments, you know, in our 200 hour teacher training, people submit assignments. And in one of the assignments, Lisa was doing the most perfect standing warrior three on crutches. And I remember pausing the video before, before writing anything on feedback. And anatomically speaking, this is the important part. Anatomically speaking, I look and she, no, I'm not, I'm not talking anatomically speaking from the perspective of aesthetics aesthetics and yoga I want to make clear that I'm talking about anatomically speaking in the sense of safety her body was in perfect safe alignment her forearm crutches allowed the elbows to bend almost like we do in a chaturanga slightly higher than chaturanga which was even better her knee was micro bent her core was engaged and I said to myself wow that must require a lot of upper body strength because when we're doing chaturanga or planks uh, in whatever version that we do it is uh, 
a lot of upper body. And for you being able to stand on one leg and using your upper body, that's something uh, very powerful. And that was the moment that it, I clicked. It clicked for me. That's, that's quite impressive that you, from my understanding, you're the first one who's coming out to the world and sharing yoga from your perspective. And my next question is. Can I have my teary moment there? That was real. Thank yeah. You, for telling me you need that. tissue? <laughs> tissue? No, I have tissue. Sure, okay, go, to go for that. <laughs> Thank you. That was a very Thank powerful you. moment that I never shared with you, but the visual for me struck me there. And I said, yoga teachers, we, some yoga teachers, they teach from such an uninformed place. And we, we, learn not to cause harm and because of lack of education we cause more harm and it's not the harm that you heal quickly like a oh i my my wrist hurt or my knee hurt is the harm that is lasting or i would say even everlasting because those memories that you get of being discriminated or being mistreated in a yoga class, they stay with you within your body. So we're not talking about the superficial here. But my next question to you is, at what point from that person who was taking the training and it was, okay, I'm gonna do it on the chair. And that person who, okay, I'm doing my assignments with crutches. How do we end up with this force of nature that you are right now, like hiking, swimming, being outspoken, being an Instagram, what the heck happened? Um, you know, it, it's, it's hard to say. I had actually, um, I was pretty uh, vocal for a bit. And then I, I, I had actually been featured in some international like websites and publications. And it was amazing. And then I just sort of retreated because it felt like a lot. And then, I mean, this isn't about yoga, but when I joined my local U.S. Masters swim team just less than a year ago, swimming really got me back to being an athlete. It's made me feel so strong. My yoga practice actually makes my swimming better. So when I'm swimming, it's like I'm doing a warrior three because I'm engaging my core in that same way. I'm engaging my bandhas gently so I can stay in my streamline. You know, when I competed uh, in May at the Pacific Masters Championships, you know, getting on that uh, diving block is basically a forward fold when you start to dive off. Yes. And all of a sudden, it's like all these things click. I'm like, I am an athlete. I'm an athlete of who I used to be. And it's just, it's made me feel really just strong. Like that sh physical strength has just given me a lot of more ability to feel more vocal about what I'm experiencing. Yeah. And there's more to it and it might come to me later, but really it's just been kind of like a lovely lineup of events. I'm a dragon. If you're, I, I don't know much about the Chinese zodiac, but I'm a dragon at the dragon year, and I keep joking about it's my dragon year. So I'm gonna do the uh, thing. It's my dragon year. Let it all out. <laughs> so, um, and I will ask Jeremy, who's our producer for this Zoom, if he can drop Jeremy, please, um, uh, Lisa's Instagram, so you guys can actually uh, follow her on Instagram. Um, like the video that you sent me, Lizzie, about swimming and the jump and everything, it's so wonderful. First of all, because you and I spoke about how the forearm process makes you so strong on the upper body. But then you have the second part, which is swimming, which is a full body workout, but particularly with your with your legs. And I'm sure a lot of people home are are wondering what is the condition what is the situation that move you into uh being a forearm a permanent forearm crutch 
user would you be comfortable sharing what what is it or not and i respect sure yeah the, sure yeah so in 2016 i went instantly paralyzed from it's basically a neuroimmune attack on your spinal cord um so i ended up basically with an incomplete spinal cord injury from that and then in 2018 i ended up with an emergency thoracic spine fusion <laughs> so i went paralyzed again from that and then in 2019, I was dealing with paralysis. I was admitted to the hospital and I could only talk and move my left hand. And they, that finally, they figured out it. And I love to say this fast because no one can say it. It ended up being chronic inflammatory demyelinating polyneuropathy. <laughs> so um, that is a disease that basically um, attacks your nerves from the like outside, so feet and hands distally inward like if you think about multiple sclerosis is like spinal cord so it's kind of mm -hmm. actually inside out this um for back of a letter word kills off to myelinate some nerves from outside in so i can't feel my feet up to about my lower leg now i can feel pressure and i have strength obviously but i can't feel temperature or touch same I'm with just... my hands so that's the forearm crutches give me a lot of um they give me balance especially if you can't feel your feet you trip a lot <laughs> So when you go into the pool, you feel temperature in certain parts of your body and don't feel anything in other parts of your body. I can kind of feel like with the pool and um, I do a lot of cold water swimming. So there's lots of mountain lakes around here. I can't necessarily feel temperature in the same way. Like if I got in the water, someone else would be like, this is cold. I'm like, eh. Um, I can only mostly feel it because it'll take my breath away. Like yesterday morning it was only 40 degrees fahrenheit and we swim outside right now and i got in the pool and i felt cold but it was more like it was hard to breathe versus feeling like physically right. cold if that makes sense understand yes yeah yes. yeah um so i have another question for you i have a, i mean i have so many questions uh <laughs> you we were talking the other day you and i have i remember when i was a kid growing up in Argentina, the only type of forearm, forearm, the only type of crutches that I remember seeing were the ones that you will put in your armpit. I remember my cousin breaking his foot and uh, using those. And then we have Jeremy, who's born in France, and he always seen the forearm crutches. So can you give us a little bit of history of, of forearm, a forearm sure. crutches 101? Sure. Um... I can show you. So I'll say that, um, yeah, so in the United States, they do tend to give you, like, if you have a um, just an acute injury, like a sprain or a fracture, they'll give you the underarm ones. Um, and you can buy cheap forearm crutches off Amazon, but there's nothing ergonomic about them. Um, so that wouldn't be something that would be comfortable long term. So the ones that I have and some other brands that make ergonomic ones, are designed for long-term or permanent disabilities. Do you want me to show you mine and some of the features again? I would love that. <laughs> okay, so these are mine. So I have a right and a left, and it has to do with the hand grip. So I'll show you the So you right can say one. which one is left and right based on the handle. Yeah, so if, if you could kind of see that's there, so I'll actually... For the palm and for the thumb to be comfortably. Yeah, so if you see... There you go, yeah, yeah. yeah. That thing. <laughs> I mean, this is obviously how... But this is kind of held that way and this Got one it. is held. Got yeah. it. So, these ones were designed... These are side six brand. I just put that because that's their little logo. These were designed by a woman amputee who wanted to summit high mountains without using her a prosthetic because she was an amputee at the hip. So she really designed these ones for people who wanted to be um, in the outdoors, who wanted to be athletes, um, or even people who say use theirs all the time, like a lot of um, at the hip amputees. But um, so I'll explain some of the features of mine. So this is the cuff that goes around my forearm and it these are specifically measured so these are custom built specifically measured to be comfortable 
this is the grip and I have a I call it my wetsuit but it's basically a neoprene cover it just gives me a little more um great soft grip so yeah. it gives me some like softer because I have arthritic hands so that's the um basically the grip I can adjust this so I can have my palm in a neutral or if I want to have it that neutral is better for arthritic but some people like it better like this so this can be adjusted there's actually a shock absorbing assembly in here. So they're shock absorbing. So you reduce forearm, um, I mean, wrist and shoulder fatigue. And then this is the bottom. And I can show you because I, we were talking about walking on the sand. So these are my, these are sand shoes. So these would go, I take I want you. To, I want you to on. tell us the sand experience. Oh, yeah. So, um, you know, I post on Instagram before I was really talking about yoga. I post a lot about uh, hiking and such with my forearm crutches. And a lot of people started following me who, you know, are living with similar disabilities. And a woman had made a video of being excited. She had forearm crutches and she was walking on the sand for the first time, you know, since she had, um, since whenever her disability happened. And I just said, congratulations. I remember the first time I walked on the sand and she wrote back and she said, I started walking on the sand because of you, because of watching your hiking. And I've had those experiences many times. And that's when I'm like, oh, I do need to be public. I do need to show the world that you can do these yeah. things regardless. So, yeah, that's, so that was really meaningful beautiful. that she went out and tried to walk on the sand and she just, and she was so happy about it. She loved it. Yeah, that's that's encouraging, and I, I can relate to the feeling that you know sometimes you're being called to be visible and put yourself out there, which I think you and I we can relate to that feeling. Now, so it, I, I just want to ask a question, and I'm going to preamble that by saying Lizzie and I were in agreement that the medical health systems they're not as aware of how beneficial medical crutches are and more often than not they put people on wheelchairs when they might also have the opportunity to be on a forearm crutch where they keep most of their body active if not all of the body and something along the lines that's what we were talking the other day right lucy yeah and talking about walkers and i will say C correct. that no, yeah and go ahead no, and so this is my thought, and it just come, came crashing on my head. One of the first things that we do with elderly when they start losing balance is putting them on walkers. Mm -hmm. Isn't a forearm crutch a much better alternative for someone who's losing balance? I'm thinking of my mom. Before she passed away, she, she was losing a lot of balance, and she never I... had any device. So you do have to have a decent amount of upper body strength. But the thing that I see is like, I've met people who have been using walkers for years. Now they're very hunched over. So Correct. it's causing back issues, but they've never seen forearm crutches. And they're like, oh, I would love to be able to try them. It, it's a totally new way of walking. So I feel like it's people when they're first given whatever their adaptive or assistive device, Give them the best one. Give them the one that's going to make them have the best quality of life. I had a walker and a walker they considered success, but I was still falling with it and breaking multiple bones a lot. But it was success because I had mobility. And, you know, when I first learned to walk with my forearm crutches, it was hard. It was tough. I cried. It hurt. But I figured it out quickly because I realized that it was going to give me so much more freedom than this really terrible walker that I was using and, you know, didn't, was making me fall. And I couldn't, I couldn't go out and be who, I couldn't be an athlete with my walker. Now, some people can, but I couldn't. So would you say that it's like day and night experience walker to forearm crutches in your case? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Yes. Because with the walker, even if you have the one that has hand brakes, you're still calm. You don't want it to slide out from you, you know, so you're, it's a totally 
different experience. Um, and it's really hard to quantify because it's been so long since I've used a walker. Because trust me, I was like, I'm, I donated one of them. And another one is out in my garage that I'm, I'm building kind of this three-dimensional sculpture with all of, like my old adaptive crap equipment. <laughs> Like I'm building like a like a disabled human with nothing anyway. like art therapy. <laughs> yeah, so I have I call it my orthopedic supply closet that's turning into a three dimensional human. Um, so it's been a long time since I used one, but I just remember it always felt like it was going to slide out from under me. Whereas, you know, form crutches, if you if you get a good brand, um, and they don't have to necessarily be these or the other brands out there that I've seen that are you know, you'll get good grip on the bottom. So they're not sliding out from under you. Can you give us a price range from the most uh, affordable to the most sophisticated one? Or there's nothing such as that? Um, I could. Go <laughs> so for you it. get some really terrible ones on Amazon that they're okay. not gonna have any ergonomics, no shock absorbers for about $25. Okay, nobody then... buys on Amazon, okay? Yeah, no, you get, the, I bet, you know, unless you just need them for a couple of weeks and the underarm ones are hurting you. Um, and then these ones with all of my different accessories and stuff, um, I was gifted these, uh, but these ones with all my accessories and stuff, I've spent over a thousand dollars. And I think the base, just the base where you get like, you know, this, which is amazing. I think it's around 860 US dollars for the for this particular one that I have and I think that's probably the priciest but and I love them they're amazing I'm assuming <laughs> the government doesn't cover anything um no not in the United States I know that um these ones like the ones that I have are built in Canada and I know there are certain certain conditions that the Canadian government pays for them. I know veterans actually, and I don't know if they're just in Canada or US veterans, there is some opportunity for actually veterans to get higher quality adaptive equipment. So that's that's good to know. <laughs> Remind me if I'm if, if this number is right. I, I remember you and I were talking about how many people are uh, permanent wheel uh forum crutches users in the US or, or in the world, I cannot remember. And it was half a million. Was, uh, more than that, right? More than that. I can't remember. But was the number. U.S. right? It was a U.S. number? Yeah, it might have been the U.S. I know a lot, even just not necessarily personally, but I know a lot, even in my in my area that I live in, that are out. You know, because there's a lot of outdoor athletes in this area that are living with disabilities. Let's go ahead and ask our our soon produ producer Jeremy to do a quick. Uh, Google search or chat GPT, mm -hmm. how many permanent forum crutches are in the US? And there's not a real number. I mean, it's, it's an estimation because there's not a survey or anything like that. Um, but I wanna take you back to the, to the mat. And, okay. and for anyone who's, who's thinking, okay, if I decide to give it a try to at least see if I someone with the same experience as you who is giving forum crutches a try, what would be the first few things that you will tell them about life at large, adapting to them? And then what would you tell them in terms of their yoga practice? Um, just life at large. Go slow. Start slow. Uh, there's going to be frustration. Uh, listen to your body You know, if you need to rest. Um, and if you, if they end up working out for you, there's literally a whole world to be explored. Um, a woman I know actually last night sent me a message who I'd encouraged her to get for and practice, sent me a message that she had taken into like a doctor's appointment and she had like no pain, not a zilch, zero. It was amazing. So, and she said that I hope that I'm going to stand up straight again one day and I said with with gentle practice I believe that you will so and that's kind of where the yoga part comes in because it's things like going through a mountain pose using the crutches which I can demonstrate in just a bit 
uh, you know, learning to stand up straight and using the crutches as an as a crutch <laughs> to help you stand up straight, learning to push into and really trust them as a yoga prop. And that's, you know, so it's standing up straight. It's things like, you know, using any assistive device because, you know, I'm using my shoulders and my wrists and my back just gets cranky because I have uh, severe arthritis on my back. You know, it's like standing in line. I can do some like cat cow with my crutches, just standing there. And that's part of the yoga practice of, of staying upright, you know, and keeping the spine aligned. So and, this was talking about the benefits of using forearm crutches. Yeah, and in yoga, and that's the yoga part is as you learn to use them, kind of building in some of these shapes, you know, the asana shapes and using those to, to learn how to use them, you know, as I said, just starting out in mountain pose where you're lear learning how to stand tall while pushing into your grips. It's a great place to start just to learn how to just stand tall. So this is an interesting this is an interesting, you are an interesting story to destigmatize what disability is. Because I think that most of the times in yoga communities, when they think about disability, the first thing that they think is someone who's in a wheelchair and they cannot stand up. That's the, that's and, the, and, the, and they're pathetic. And they're pathetic. Correct. They're pathetic, pathetic lives. And I and, I still get it in doctors' offices from other patients, and they're like, "Oh, you poor thing, your life must be so horrible." And I'm like, "No, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good." And, <laughs> and I move better than they do, you know, but because, then, because that, I'm not afraid to use my equipment, you know. Correct. And so that's what I'm saying. <laughs> then you show up with crutches, doing all the standing postures, and actually going to the floor and doing all the seated postures. And if they only knew that you do uh, hiking and swimming, uh, I mean, I guess I'm reminding myself and asking everyone to always remember, don't make any assumptions about anyone. Uh, but it's an interesting thing because uh, disability in yoga is, oh, put, put, put the person on a chair. And here mm -hmm. you are, someone who we don't want to put on a chair. That's that's yeah. That's actually, fine. when when Warrior Flow, so keep in mind, I'm still angry with this injury in Warrior Flow, and I'm talking about it. And I got the feedback just practice in the chair. I was like, oh, and I reached out to a yoga friend of mine. You know, we have to have those yoga teachers that can understand. I'm like, they said I should practice in the chair, and they're like, isn't it interesting that anyone who's sick or disabled, we automatically assume we should put them in a chair and it's going to be fine. Right. I was like. Thank right. you. And that's when I was like, okay, I need to she said, take up space. Lizzie, take up space. Use your crutches. Yeah. <laughs> and, and with the same token, I mean, I can, we can go down the rabbit hole. Disability as a, as a, as a thing, the American Disability Act was signed in 1993, 95. And then it was reviewed in 2008. But the first uh, organizations for people with disabilities, I think they go back to the 1800 and yoga, as we know it these days, the physical practice, it doesn't go more than 200 years ago. I guess this is my way to say humanity is getting used to the concept of disability as part of life but it's something new, relatively, relatively speaking. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it, it's, a, it's an interesting thing. I, as you know, I am your biggest fan to encourage you to put you out there and, and do something. I was wondering, first of all, um, before I forget the question, but you answered in a minute, is, are there any organizations specific for specific for forum crutches wait a minute for the answer um for everyone who's tuning in right now live i want you to type a question or comment about that, that you might have for for lizzie about this topic um and also going to ask uh jeremy to drop the, the link of our 200 hour teacher training 
for anyone who's interested in learning this. And I'm excited to say that Lisa is going to be teaching forearm crutches. I don't know how we're going to call it, yoga with forearm crutches, or <laughs> probably we'll have to come up with an acronym or something like that. But um, we're excited about that. Okay, going back to the question. Now you have to remind me of the question. You got me fired up <laughs> about all the rest. You're yeah. worse than me. I was asking you if there are any organ or any organizations, either national or international, for foreign crutches users or any crutch type of crutches users, whether national or international. Um, I think I know like so. My brand. Unfortunately, when I, the, the co-founder, Sarah, passed away uh, last year, it used to, there used to be kind of more of a community. Um, and I don't know if they're going to rebuild that. Um, not that the community is lost. It's just that there's not, a, there's not the social media posting and such. So I used to feel very connected with that. I don't know as far as like in general, I'm not sure. I did do some Google searching and I didn't necessarily come up with anything specific. Um, Is there a Facebook but, group? I, I couldn't find any actually. I did look, I couldn't find anything. I couldn't so while you're anything. waiting to create one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that would be the first stop. <laughs> Yeah, no. no, when I, 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 I try to use all different kinds of words because they also call them Canadian crutches and they also call them Lostrian crutches. And I couldn't find anything on Facebook as a, um, like any groups on Facebook. So no, I couldn't find anything. Yeah. And if there's anything that anyone knows of, please let me know, but nothing well, can find. Going back to the chat, uh, in case I haven't seen the message, Lizzie, I'm going to read it for you and everyone. Jeremy found. Okay. Uh, on Google, crutches are used by many people for daily mobility because of impaired use of one or both legs. Around 6 million people in the USA use crutches. 4.2% of women and 34 of men in Europe have walking disability. And around 2.8 million people in Canada have a type of mobility disability. So we're talking about millions of people. And I ask myself, for those millions of people, how many millions of people will, will be much better with front crutches than walkers or wheelchairs? Or canes, not, or even a cane. Or canes. And there's nothing wrong uh -huh. with canes, and there's nothing wrong with wheelchairs, mm -mm. and there's nothing wrong with all of that, okay? Mm -mm. But how many of them might be better off uh, with this sort of device, for lack of a better word, for ability that is not so well known. Yeah, and I will say that I get it a lot, and this I don't mind, is when I see someone walking with a walker, I, I often get asked, tell, tell me about what you're using and I in those times I absolutely don't mind educating and Correct. and uh and and they're they're curious because you know I can walk really fast with them now that I've been using them for such a long time um and yeah people are curious because they haven't seen it and they haven't been offered it um Lisa I don't remember if we agreed or not on this part of the workshop but which might doing a little demo or yeah. you prefer not to? okay yeah Go for it. yeah i'm i just have to uh switch my angle camera angle a bit so I'm and jeremy if you want away. to spotlight lisi right see let's see i have to go back and forth So can you see all of me? Yes. Let me remove myself from spotlight. Okay, there you are. What would you like me to demonstrate, Adrian? You've seen me do a lot of that. Uh... I don't know. You are the expert. I'm just here learning with everyone else. So <laughs> give us a couple of tips. Mountain pose. I don't yeah, know. So 
I'm going to start like from seated for a mountain just because it's, um, especially if you're brand new to forearm crutches and you don't necessarily trust them yet. So for a mountain pose, you know, it's like rooting into your seat, you know, feeling tall through the spine, rooting through your feet and feeling that feeling of grounded. And then I'm just going to put my forearm crutches and now instead of grounding through my feet, I'm pushing through my hands. So it's at this point, it's like my hands are an extension of my feet. And I'm going to stand up. So I'm pushing into my crutches. And I'm getting that same sense of grounding, but I'm not relying on my feet. So instead of grounding through my feet, I'm able to lift tall through my crutches. You know, and it's that same, you know, you can have a hands facing out. And or here's in. A, at least an interesting thing that I'm just noticing now. You keep your arms almost in full extension when they're touching the ground and slightly ahead of you, right? Mm -hmm. Interesting. Uh, yeah. Jeremy's asking if tree pose, triangle, or half moon are easy postures or complicated postures to do. What do you think? of any of those and uh, please don't do I mean, anything that you feel not ready for i meant to put my block here because i was going to show like uh some tree i love to do tree because i'm out in the trees all the time but if i had a block i might just put my foot on the block so let's pretend like there's a block yes. here so again it's so if i'm going to stand on my left leg and lift my right Again, it's that pushing into my crutches, rooting through my crutches versus necessarily rooting into my standing leg. Now, I'm doing that too, but I'm not going to rely on my standing leg because it's not going to hold me up. So in this, then I'm just going to bring that right leg up to just my ankle. And I'm pushing more into my right because that feels safer for me, more balanced. Now this might be a slightly more advanced. And then if I want, I can lift my arm up or, you know, I can sway like a tree. And again, I'm still practicing balance because this isn't easy. Uh, obviously, have, you know, core, everything. Yeah. So there's no. lots and lots of physical therapy that's helped me get strong. Lisa, quick uh, question. If if yeah. if you give if you give us your side view, can you show us the cat cow that you were talking that you're doing in the supermarket? Yeah, of course. So I'm gonna put these just slightly in front of me. And I might just oh look. Wow, that feels so good. Yeah, and then just a little so it's subtle. No one really knows what I'm doing. But and what a great way to lengthen reset. your abdomen. Yeah, I just like especially that it just feels great. Yeah, the abdomen, the hip flexors, the neck. Yeah. Give us one last movement of your choice. What's your favorite posture after tree pose? Uh, you know, I do love that warrior three. I go for it. <laughs> I'm not going to say <laughs> tell you what to do. You you tell us what you like to do. So going into my warrior three again, I'm putting my crutches in front of me, really rooting into my crutches. Also knowing, so I'm going to lift up my left leg, rooting into my right leg, but I'm not going to rely on my right leg for that balance. And then sort of lengthening through the spine. I'm, I, I've been taught how to gently engage my bond, and so I'm doing that so I can feel good in it. And then I'm really relying on the strength of my upper body to go into my warrior three. And it feels Amazing. really good. And I always like to go to my half moon from there because it's just fun. <laughs> and we're just talking about forearm crutches, but the 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 world of possibilities um 
the world of possibilities Lizzie, with the crutches and the wall and the and the chair for you know you're a pro but what i'm i guess what i'm trying to say is that the possibilities that you have are endless wall prop locks you mentioned so that's quite quite uh unique yeah thank you for demonstrating those postures yes i love to do them too because it it helps my upper body strength and um some of them i practice uh at home on a mat so i have the sticky mat underneath me so i won't slide around <laughs> but it just it helps my upper body strength and as i said it's like especially that cat towel when i feel like where I'm, i've had to travel a lot to manage some family stuff and traveling is painful and just that cat towel gently subtly yeah. feels amazing I have a question, but it's one of those questions that you never know if it's appropriate to ask or not sure. until you ask, yeah, but because you're it. a friend, I'm gonna ask. Um, and there might be some bias on, on the question and, and I'm happy for you to, to, if you feel like to, to educate me. In the meantime, before I, I, I do, I give you this question. Uh, Jeremy, can you remind everyone Lisa's promo code for our 200 hour teacher training? The starts in September. If you sign up with Lisa's code, you can uh, get a 20% discount for the training. So my question to you, um, and I know there might be a little bit of bias, but you tell me about it. Do you, how does it feel to have a disability knowing that you're much stronger than 80% of the population. Um, sometimes I don't realize that it's unique. <laughs> and it feels, I feel really empowered. I feel really empowered. Um, being, living with a disability i sort of got lucky when i fell into a community of disabled athletes and i saw how strong they were and i saw how they could they could destroy some of my able-bodied friends easily because they're so strong yeah. and seeing that and knowing it was kind of a you know i couldn't play wheelchair sports because ironically my spine is so bad um it feels empowering. I love that I I love that I'm really proactive in my health and it feels it feels empowering. It just makes me feel strong. It makes me excited that I can do things that I didn't think I would ever do again. Yeah, and that excitement shines through you. <laughs> I can I can feel that when you talk about those things. My last question for you today, and I invite anyone who's live, uh, if you have any questions, this will be the right time to uh, type them on the chat before we close this conversation with Lizzie. But my last question to you is, um, and I give you an example. So I was reading the an interview with one of our uh, faculty members, uh, Jacoby Ballard, who is the, the author of Queer Dharma, and yeah. uh, and he's a, a, a trans man. And he does a lot of activism and social justice, but he doesn't want to be pigeonholed into I'm only do trans work all the time. It's, he's a yoga teacher. He's very knowledgeable about Buddhism and so many other things. I guess my question to you or final thoughts are, what is it that you're looking for to be uh, a teacher of other people with similar disabilities? Um, do you have the intention of teaching regular classes? Where do you think you're heading? My goodness. Um, uh -huh. <laughs> I'm still, I think I'm still trying to sort it out. Um, one of the difficult things, you know, I reached out to some people personally who I know who are forum press users, and it's hard for people with disabilities to understand that yoga is for them too. Now, are you gonna start with the Warriors Free? Absolutely not. Yeah, I mean, maybe you are. Um, but sometimes uh, 
trying to figure out, so I guess maybe where I'm headed is how do I climb that mountain to let other people know who are living with a disability that yoga is for them? You know, if you, there's a lot of teachers out there that are educated enough to make those classes inclusive. So I guess it's some of that, that I used to do social justice work. And I guess some of it's kind of that social justice, like how do we make yoga accessible to people with disabilities? How do we let people know who are living with a disability that yoga is for them too? And that's, that's, that's one place that I'm headed. Um, it's just, how do we, how do I figure that out? And I know, I don't know. I would love to teach actual forum crutch classes to forum crutch users. Because I, I, I don't know what it looks like. <laughs> Even within the yoga, the accessible yoga community, you're uh, you're not uh, the type of people that you have in an accessible yoga classes. Well, maybe, but maybe not, because I know I take uh, my good, you know, my yoga friend up in Tahoe, who's the founder of Accessible uh, Yoga Tahoe. Accessible Yoga Sacramento, I do go up to her classes and I will, um, you know, I use my crutches and in that space, it's very safe, you know, for me to use my crutches, I can drop a crutch. The couple of times that I actually taught a couple forum crutch users, I said, and now we're going to throw our crutches on the floor as loud as we yeah. can, you know. Um, so uh, I, I guess it's just finding places where I can show up, I can either practice or teach with my crutches and make that just be who I am and make it safe. Correct. So what I was trying to say is that even with the accessible yoga community or the adaptive community, most of the times there, there's, there's usually wheelchair users or people who prefer to be in the chair and not so many on crutches. So even in the world of accessible yoga, you are kind of entering a path where you are the I mean, I would say the pioneer uh, with the help of your mentors, and you can take the way for many other people who are going through similar experiences. And that's, that's quite powerful, I think. I have never seen, and please correct me if I'm wrong, I've never seen someone practicing with forearm crutches. Who uses I have them. never seen someone on crutches in my class in more than 20 years. And okay. I can, I can testify right now that I probably have taught more than 20,000 classes. And I might be short on the number of classes that I'm saying. Um, never. I never seen someone walking. Uh, the only person that I remember is a, a blind student walking with a cane. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a lot of Lisa coming our way. So I'm, I'm very excited. I want to read some of the comments. Um, Kat says, last time that I swam, I was so winded. I had a friend load me because I didn't feel like I could make it back. Yeah, I can relate to that. Like if I do the, if I do myself the warrior three that Lisa just demo for us for as long as she did, I probably need to sit down or take a nap after that. <laughs> Melissa, Lisa, you are such an inspiration to others who journey a similar pathway, even those with canes. Love your story of strength and per perseverance. You are such a strong advocate for this marginalized population. Oh, there you go. Lisa, you are such an inspiration to others who journey a similar pathway. Even oh, Am I reading the same message? Even though love your story of strength and perseverance, yeah, I think I read the same message twice, but we get the feeling. Um, I'm I'm happy to just to get to know you. We had a, a very deep conversation, more about mental health. That I would like Jeremy to add the link whenever he releases these these uh, these uh, workshop interview. For those of you who are watching live, we will send a recording of. Uh, of, of this hour and uh, and Jeremy, if you want one last time, share the, uh, the information about Lisi, her Instagram for anyone who has any questions 
you can reach out directly to her. As you can see, she will be more than happy to answer. And I, and I also really want to plug, if you're living with a disability and you're interested in becoming a yoga teacher or just getting deeper into the practice, take the warrior flow training, whether it's a 200 or you already have a 200, you want to do a 300 hour, take it because you're going to be supported and you're going to be in a place where you feel like you belong. So I just want to really plug the Warrior Flow School and how Thank you. supported I felt, you know, after I Thank decided you. I Thank was going to. <laughs> and I ask also want to say thank you to the Accessible Yoga Tahoe and Sacramento who share about the workshop. And so your your tribe kind of were supporting you on the on the on the Instagram, Facebook world. So I really appreciate that, um, Lizzie. Uh, I want you to close the hour uh, and let me see what, what I'm going to ask you to say and to share the hour. I'm thinking this is just me being spontaneous. Okay. Why someone with any disability should get on a yoga mat or crutches? or chair? The first thing that jumps to my mind is pain relief. Living with any disability, you're probably dealing with some sort of pain, whether my, as my yoga therapist says, pain is pain. So whether it's physical or emotional pain, pain is pain. And getting on a mat or the crutches or the chair doing yoga is it's going to bring you to a different place in a relationship with your pain. Maybe not alleviate it completely, but it'll give you a different relationship. And to have some alleviation of suffering, pain is pain, is absolutely why you should do it. That's a beautiful answer and sounds very Buddhist. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you Lisa so much I really appreciate thank your you. time and what, what you're doing and what we're creating together and I hope for those who are watching home and watching now that you find this story uh, empowering and if you know anyone with crutches forward the, 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 the video once you receive the replay because you never know you never know how someone's life can change just by getting the information at the right time. Lisa, it's always a fresh pleasure. See you soon. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone here live. We appreciate you. Take care, everyone. Be well.